Philadelphia is home to many of the most famous foods in America. From the Philly cheesesteak to the soft pretzel and even the delicious tasty cakes, they are all original to Philadelphia and which many people love to eat and enjoy. They are all important and crucial because they are Philly icons. Tourists come here every year to devour all the delicious options this city has to offer. My name is Natasha Agape and I'm here to talk about the most famous foods in Philadelphia, its history, and how it came to be. I'm going to start off with what has to be the most famous food from our city, the Philly cheesesteak. The cheesesteak was invented in the 1930s by Pat Oliveri, who at the time was a hot dog vendor. One day, he decided to grow beef and put it on an Italian roll. A cab driver that was passing by noticed the smell of the steak and decided to order one from Oliveri's stand. It was spread throughout the city quickly and became popular the next day. By selling this new creation, Pat and his brother Harry eventually made enough money to open a restaurant which they called Pat's King of Steaks. The earliest versions of the sandwich was just thinly sliced grilled beef and onions on an Italian loaf. This became very, very popular as their business kept on growing. Some even thought that their restaurant really grew because of Pat himself. He had spread the word about his new creation and made it awfully popular and well known all over the world. In 1966, a new restaurant was created by Joey Vento right across from Pat's and was called, you guessed it, Gino Steaks. They served almost the exact same items on their menu. And even though many stores had already opened and sold the same items, the difference with Gino's was the proximity of the restaurants and rivalry because of it. Some stories even claim that Joe Lorenzo, who worked at Pat's in the 1940s, had come up with the idea to put the cheese on the sandwich. But Joey Vento had claimed that he first had the idea to put it on the sandwich, which created the cheesesteak we know of today. Over the course of time, cheesesteaks became a Philadelphia staple, a must-have food to try, and the icon for the city of brotherly love. As time went on, many stores have started to create alternatives to the original cheesesteak, such as the chicken cheesesteak and the veggie steak. Vegadelphia even launched the vegan and vegetarian versions in 2004. Pat's and Gino's are just two of hundreds of places you can visit while you are in Philadelphia. Some other restaurants that are also very well known in the area are John's Roast Pork, Tony Luke's, Phillips Steaks, Ralph and Ricky's, and many, many more. After the break, I'll talk more about the famous foods this city has to offer. we've got cheese steaks covered, we'll move on to something more savory, which is the Philly soft pretzel. The soft pretzel dates back to Italy in 1610 AD. Monks would use them as rewards or prizes to make their scholars study harder. Imagine having, having Mr. Holchi giving you guys pretzels so that every day, every single one of you would come in and do the do now right away. The bretzel, which was the name for it in Austria and Germany, quickly spread, and also to many other countries. When the Dutch first came to the U.S., they brought their favorite snack with them, the pretzels. The first pretzel came to Philly in 1861 in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Legend has it that a baker named Ambrose Roth got the famous pretzel recipe from a homeless man after giving the man shelter for the night. During the Civil War, many of these soft pretzels were donated to the soldiers of the North by Roth's apprentice, Julius Sturgis. Sturgis then went on and started the first commercial pretzel bakery. The Nacho family started the Federal Pretzel Baking Company in 1922. In 1930, they also sold them to Philadelphia public schools so that they could serve them to students. In the film It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, Joseph Nacho made a 40 pound soft pretzel in 1963. In 1978, Federal Baking established their new machine cut soft pretzels. And you know how people go on putting mustards on their pretzels, which by the way is disgusting? It's traced back to the fact that the pretzels were often sold by hot dog vendors who were offering mustard. Chefs in Philadelphia started to bake the pretzels round as dinner rolls, and also pretzel dogs, which is a sausage stuffed pretzel, are rather new. Some soft pretzel bakeries even offer a pretzel stuffed with cheesesteak. How about that? A cheesesteak and pretzel in one. What's unique about the 
Philadelphia soft pretzels are that they aren't the usual loop and cross kind of thing. These pretzels are soft, uh, tight figures, have skinny ends, and are in the shape of an eight. They are also do doughy and soft, hence the name soft pretzel, and are not hard and crunchy like the versions before it. Most of these pretzels are still made in Philadelphia and is still a very popular snack to get. And the pretzel even has its own national day, which is on April 26th. When we come back after the break, we'll be talking about very sweet treats. Now we're moving on to rather sweet treats. They're called, you probably guessed it, Tasty Cakes. These cakes were founded in 1914 by Philip J. Bauer and Herbert T. Morris in Germantown with an investment of $50,000, around $1.2 million in today's values. Full-sized loaves with icing on top were the first kinds of cakes made. They were priced originally between $0.05 cents to $0.10 cents a piece. In the first nine months of business, they sold almost 3 million items. The city's workers, such as workers for factory, mills, and mines, enjoyed the ex inexpensive baked goods. It quickly became a staple to every lunch and Philly's baseball game. Tasty Cake moved to Hunting Park Avenue where they added new items and treats and the smaller versions that we know of today, Coke, Chocolate and Coconut Juniors. In 1931, the Tandy Cake was introduced and later became known as Candy Cakes, which are the most popular cakes in the company's history. Nearly half a million are baked and packaged every day. During World War II, thousands of cakes were sent overseas to soldiers, which hugely expanded their market. The brand expanded even more and sales doubled in the late 1950s and early 1960s when the company had state-of-the-art machinery that did 12 hours worth of work in 45 minutes. In the 1970s to 1980s, the company made even more new products such as muffins, more pastries, and chocolate-covered pretzels. They also expanded to giving it to the sports teams outside of Philadelphia. By the end of 2010, the whole world had, had been exposed to the creation of the Tasty Cake. In 2011, the company was sold to Flowers Foods for $34 million. The company celebrated their 100th anniversary in 2014. Today, <clears throat> Tasty Cakes are available all throughout the East Coast, the South, Southwest, and online shipping to anywhere. These Tasty Cakes are irresistible and are still loved by many people today. After the break, we'll be moving on to our last topic in this video. Now on to something more general. I'm going to be talking about one of the best public markets in the country, the Reading Terminal Market. This market officially opened in February of 1892, and it led for a new time for more urban food marketing in the Philadelphia area. After reaching a settlement with the dealers from the 12th Street Market Company, the Reading Railroad established their new market. A reputation for this company and market quickly developed for being one of the best in the country. They were part of a trade in Philadelphia after the Civil War because growers in the South didn't want to ship produce to places in the North all year round. They were also known for their creative idea as using their basement for cold storage and where they had a roller system on their ceiling that allowed for goods to be moved easily throughout the hallways and into the cold rooms. During the 1970s and 80s, the Reading Railroad came out from bankruptcy and sold their buildings to the Pennsylvania Convention Center Authority, which made the Reading Terminal Market face questionable times as to whether they were going to still be in business or not. Fortunately, in 1990, the PCCA purchased Reading Terminal Market and incorporated it into the new convention center. The market has kept its reputation as one of the best public markets in the U.S. and celebrated their centennial in 1992. The market brings in tourists from all around the country and also frequent visitors just for lunch. Even though there are many, many shops and restaurants to visit while you're there, I'm going to name some of the m most popular of them all. The Nix has some of the best roast pork sandwiches in the country. It has appeared on Travel Channel's Man vs. Food and Best Sandwich in America, 
and their roast pork sandwich was crowned the best sandwich in America. If you were going for something that's not as filling, you could visit Miller's Twist, which sells one of the best pretzel and pretzel dogs in the area. And you could also visit the bakery that is very, very well known, which is the Termini Brothers. They serve so many delicious baked goods that also include their very popular cannolis. You can even stop for something a little different, like shrimp pad thai at Little Thai Market. You can get just about anything you want at the Rating Terminal Market, whether it's a sweet or savory snack or a full-on meal. That's all I'm going to talk about today. These different kinds of foods are iconic to Philadelphia and are known all around the world. So many people around the globe enjoy these foods and it's thanks to the men and women that helped to create all of these foods, whether it was by accident or they really wanted to make it. These different and diverse kinds of foods are all very important to Philadelphia and its history. They are all from the different kinds of cultures that exist in the city of brotherly love. So if you have any free time to spare, you should go out to try one of the things that you've never tried before. Whether it's a quick snack or a full-size sandwich, you'll be sure to get a great taste of Philadelphia. I hope you got something out of this, and, I'm, and I also hope that you get to appreciate all the different kinds of cuisine around us. I'm now going to get some food for myself because I've just made myself hungry. Thank you for spending 12 minutes of your time watching me talk about food. Thank you for spending 12 minutes of your time listening to me talk about food. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Bye!